experience was very positive, um, but quite frustrating to start off with because we um, hadn't fully appreciated um, how the course was set up. Um, and as teachers, we like to be given everything on a plate, and that didn't happen. I think we were grasping for a beginning, a middle, and an end, and uh, it simply wasn't there. And uh, as as sort of experienced practitioners, I thought that, um, well, how are we going to tackle this? And uh, yes, we tried as much as possible to follow the guidelines, but um, as the project evolved, it became clear that um, the pupils had, in some ways, their own agenda, and uh, it was quite exciting for them to develop areas such as the, the, the hair analysis, uh, where they ended up taking in samples from home, from the local farm, off the croft and we, we spent a long time looking at um, aspects of uh, how different animals grow hair, why they grow hair. So we got off tangent a lot and for a while it worried me that we were going off tangent. After a while we grew to like, go with the flow. Yeah, my name is Mr. Shulei Ashutande and I teach um, biology and a bit of psychology. It's interesting, it's fun and it's also, it provides a means of working with schools and sharing ideas. But um, we had some challenges, a lot of loose ends. And the pupils were also able to, you know, go off tangent and then we came back to the main focus at the end. So it was, it was quite good. All you need to do, if you're a teacher listening to me, wanting to do this, um, just make sure you are very well prepared. So we thought the information was very, very sparse. But I now realise that it was done so that we could um, run it in the way that we wanted to run it. Now that I've been through the process, I understand, and I think it was um, a very good way to do it. We were looking at fingerprints because that's sort of like a key factor in how you solve like a crime, stuff like that. We looked at the fingerprints that we were given, and we identified what... Um, suspect we thought it was. Um, we found out that there's three different types of fingerprint, whirl, loop and arch and that helped us because we had to look at all the different fingerprints and look at the one left at the crime scene, compare them, see who it was. Um, my name's Joshua, I'm going to be asking the questions about the footprint. So how did we suss out who did what to the footprint? Well, we had to <coughs> get plaster paris and water and mix it together and then put it in this tin and then we let it like get a bit harder and then we stuck a shoe in it and waited for a little while and then took the shoe out. What was the reason to do that? Well, we found a footprint outside the gallery and then all the Sussex gave him a shoe so they could try and find out whose shoe it was. Hi, my name is Laura and we're from Bray High School. So at this time we just sat down and watched the videos. She was cleaning her art gallery and then they were Eric Burton, he was unemployed and they were Del Shell and she was she worked at a local shop. So we discussed in our groups who we saw had done the crime. And our group thought it was Annie and Danielle because Annie seemed a bit shifty and then Danielle was blaming it on the man. So we thought it was them. My name is Helm and um, I thought the interviews were really helpful because we could see what the reactions were to questions and like who had done it. Um, my name is Nicole and Annie, she knew a lot about what the picture looked like so that's why we sort of thought it might have been her. And she saw the painting there at half past seven um, and she was the last person in the building and the security arrived at nine o'clock though. Annie, she didn't really keen on age and it was kind of confusing and, and the man seemed kind of in a bad mood the whole time <laughs> so. Uh, well it was re quite helpful because like Eric Burton then he sent like he knew better than the police and uh, Annie Fraser White was just calm and normal, but Danielle Sinchell, then she seemed quite devious by the way, she was just so calm. 
Hello, I'm Jolene Stout. At first, we were all really shy when we were speaking on Go to each other. And once we had like done some more messages to other schools, we became more confident individuals. We also became really relaxed once we had spoken to other schools. Hi, I'm Ellie Rather from Bray High School. Glow accounts were not working, so we had to use our teacher's account and we just signed our names at the end because that was the easiest way to do it. And I felt it went really good because most of the people in our class all got a shot to put their own views about how we did the experiment. My name is Logan and I'll be explaining about our fingerprint analysis. Um, my name is Ellie. My name is Catherine. Well, um, we looked at our own fingerprints and like we um, looked at the whorls and the loops and the arches and fingerprints and that like nobody's fingerprints are the same. Well, we just kind of looked at them and found out what bits was like whorls and arches and that. Okay, and why did you do that? Why were you looking at fingerprints? Um, wasn't like the suspect's handprint. Yeah, I think it was kind of to get like an understanding of fingerprints before we looked at the suspects. My name is Vela and we learned that um, all hairs are different uh, by using a microscope. Hi, my name's Harry. Like I bring in some hair um, for different kinds of animals and we compared it to the sample at the scene. Okay, Harry, I think you're the one that lives on a croft then, aren't you? Yeah. Is that how you managed to have so many different types of animal hairs to bring in? Yeah. So which animal hairs did you bring? Um, coo, sheep, pig, horse. And uh, my name is Ian and we did this so then we could find out if it was a human hair so then we could find out if it was theirs from the kind scene. So then if it wasn't a person from a farm bringing in some animal hair that they touched. And did you think it was animal or human? I thought it was human hair. I thought it was one of the two. One of the two. It was hard to tell which one was animal which one was human. My name's Carrie. Um, I would say the hardest bit that we did was probably like trying to focus the microscopes and trying to find out, like trying to differentiate different hairs from each other. We found it that uh, it was a human hair and it was short, blonde, so we thought that it should be for Daniel Central. There was a while where we drifted away from actually trying to identify a suspect as such and we were more into the actual processes and the learning uh, associated with the processes. It was really only when we ended up looking at the police interviews that um, I think that they, for the pupils the excitement of the whole thing really became tangible. They did enjoy it as they went through it. With um, our, one of our associated primary heads, I'm beginning to think of a, a transition project which will run every two years involving S1 pupils and P7 working together on a, a, a forensic type activity. Um, we bring them all together and we split the, split the pupils up into S1, P7 mixed groups and they will perhaps follow um, stations looking at various um, pieces of evidence to gather information to then form an opinion as to who um, perhaps committed a crime. I'm also, for my class, I'm also the social education teacher because I'm the form tutor. And recently we've been talking about um, career choices. And it's also interesting to know that some of them are actually thinking of um, going into forensic science. And I told them you need biology. <laughs> See? So it's all adding up together. I think it's been a worthwhile project.